personally, this I might get some flack for this one, but I think Number of the Beast as an album is overrated. People ask me who's your favorite band, and I, I'm reluctant to say one, but it is always Maiden. Yeah, I've always I'm a fan of albums rather than bands, you know. So yeah, maybe well, you know, another- ba- bands are people, and people can and will maybe always let you down at some point, and yeah. um, <laughs> and then every every great album still has that one song that you know. Let's just let's just say every every number of the beast has its uh, uh, gangland. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that topic too, I think uh, personally, this I might get some flack for this one, but I think number of the beast as an album is overrated. Ooh. Well, I mean, you already shared that your favorite is Power Slave, right? if, I, if I remember correctly earlier in this conversation. If I had to pick favorites, it would be Power Slave and Peace of Mind. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it, for me, it's Peace of Mind is probably my favorite. Um, I just think that that whole album is so strong, especially like the first half of that album. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it was also like, you know, it was like the, the, the actual formation of, of the classic Maiden era. Um, I, I mean, Number of the Beast is, is a classic. Pa- Power Slave is a classic. I have a special relationship for with Killers because it was my first vinyl I ever bought, and it's still my back patch on my original vest. Oh, uh, my favorite, my favorite right. Eddie, also. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I still think that the Ides of March is the best intro music of all time. <laughs> All the power clown shows was Eyes yeah. of March. Yeah, yeah it's okay. they were very um, strict on only playing the first five albums. Okay, interesting. Nothing past Power Slave, or nothing past uh, Peace of Mind. Oh wow! Or no, 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 nothing past Power Slave because it went. Yeah, Power Slave is five. Yeah, five. Power Slave. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, interesting. Yeah, not- Power Slave. So they were, like will- very true. Um, made in yeah, 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 yeah. Now I will, I will say that I don't know if it is in my top three, but it will definitely be my top five. Brave New World. Oh yeah, it was such a fantastic comeback album, and I know the gravitas of that album and Bruce back and Adrian back in it. It was such a and metal, metal going from alternative back to classic metal. In, in yeah. I think in part because of that album and then Rock and Rio. Um, True. Yeah. Having legions of kids like you and I being properly introduced to what classic heavy metal was. Um, wow. And on that on that album, you mentioned you like the mid tempo ones. If I would say that there's one underrated forgotten song on that album, is the thin line between love and hate. Um, oh, it's yeah. just such a powerful song, and, and they've never played it live, and they probably never will. But that little um, breakdown where it's just like the guitar melody and the vocals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You well, brought right. a really uh, big point there, which I don't think we should gloss over too quick. That right. the game that Maiden might have had a lot to play in the revival of classic metal. Because yeah. there's no doubting that the 2000s was a huge surge of, of really good metal bands. Yeah. Coming out the 90s where there was like a, a very uh, slow period for classic metal. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, like you've got in Europe, I was lucky to grow up in the 90s. I grew, I was still in Belgium, right? So I had bands like Rhapsody and Hammerfall and stuff like that, that were starting to get some traction playing more classical metal. Because like in North America, power metal, the Jack Panzers and the, 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 the Sabotages, they had all kind of died out. Um, but in Europe, that was kind of brewing again, you know, like uh, Gamma Ray and, and Ed Guy and all that kind of stuff. But it needed that big moment um, to kind of properly shine again. And I, it's that. And then two years later, Rob Halford rejoining Judas Priest. Um, mm-hmm. I think those are two 
big moments that just so many kids who had only been wearing baggy pants and spiking their hair and 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 listening to Slipknot and Limp Bizkit, all of a sudden were introduced to harmonies and and solos, which was completely out of new metal. Right? There's almost not a sing there's not a single guitar solo on 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 all these big classic songs of that era. But yeah, um, and and it's interesting to see that now you're seeing. 20 years later, bands that were formed at that time getting traction. You guys included, but think about bands like Sabaton, right? Um, yeah. Who, what, you love them or hate them, are at the top of their game right now um, and were formed in, in that time um, under that momentum of classic metal is coming back, so which is pretty cool to see. <sighs> Yeah, I'm rocking <laughs> a pivotal moment for the metal community. <laughs> um, which also made, I think, you know, fair to say that that live show oh. made... This might be a, um, a controversial opinion, but um, mm -hmm. Fear of the Dark is just a mediocre song. But at Rock and Rio, it became this anthem that is maybe now the most popular song of iron maiden yeah um, yeah i i would agree with that that's not unpopular in my opinion like yeah having like, 250,000 people sing along you know yeah and you know some songs are like that some songs you know are just better live you know yeah. some songs are written to be to be played live maiden is definitely one of those bands that their songs are meant to be played live like i would rather see them live than listen to them, right? They are a live band. Yeah. They always have been. Uh, they translate well onto albums, but that's why their live albums have done so well, you know? Yeah, oh, 100%. There are a few of them now as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe a few too many, but that's the conversation for another time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have taken a lot of your time already, so Grant, I'm going to let you go because if if I don't forcefully shut this conversation down, you and I will be talking Maiden for two more days, I think, uh, which I'd love to do, don't get me wrong, but uh, I, I want to be respectful of your of your schedule. Um, have to thank get you, you so much. I'll have to get you on for the next subathon, and the subathon will just be talking for Maiden. watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel